Hello, this is Breakfast with Charlie State and Sally Nugent. Croatia has closed all but one of its border crossings with Serbia, saying it can't take any more migrants. Good morning. It's Friday the 18th of September. Also on the programme this morning, Carol is in Bromley with the weather for us this morning. Morning, Carol. Good morning. First, our main story. Croatia has closed seven of its eight border crossings with Serbia overnight, only a day after the Croatian Prime Minister promised free passage to migrants trying to reach northern Europe. The country estimates that 11,000 migrants have entered its territory since Tuesday, when Hungary closed its border with Serbia. Elsewhere, authorities in Slovenia stopped a train carrying more than 100 migrants at the border town of Dobova before allowing it passage to a refugee centre. Frankie McCamley reports. Thank you. Football's world governing body, FIFA, has suspended its secretary general. Labour shadow chancellor has apologised for saying members of the IRA should be honoured for what he described as their armed struggle in Northern Ireland. An NHS report has revealed huge variations in healthcare across England, including services for stroke, cancer and diabetes. Health service leaders say the NHS atlas exposes inconvenient truths, but also shows that health service can provide better value for money. Our health correspondent, Anna Brimelow, reports. The German retailer Lidl is to begin paying its staff the so-called living wage, the first major supermarket to do so. The impact of cuts on police forces in England and Wales is far greater than the government realises, according to a group of MPs. Yes, in a highly critical report, the Commons Public Accounts Committee also says cuts to other services are increasing police work. The Home Office says the reforms are working and frontline police, policing is being protected. Here's our Home Affairs correspondent, Dominic Casciani. Another story for you this morning as final preparations get underway for the Pope's visit to America. One city is determined to pull out all the stops to make sure the pontiff is made to feel welcome. How bizarre. In papal robes. I wonder where you buy that. Why would you do that? 11 minutes past six <laughs> is the time. Uh, you're right up to date. We'll have the weather a little later on. It's a big day for sport today. Excited? Yeah, absolutely. The Rugby World Cup kicks off today. Is at the centre of the operations for the World Cup at Twickenham. Morning, Mike. Hi. Why is that yes, one called Bill? Bill, that's the nickname for the trophy. Mike, oh, I love that little trophy. It's cute. I yeah. reckon it's got Mike Bushell's name on it right now. Perfect size. Let's have a look at some of the papers for you. Uh, 6.14, the time. The front page is now. Front page is Daily Telegraph. They're looking into uh, the story that... Uh, uh, front page of the Times. They have a story. They're saying that there are 3,000 terror suspects plotting to attack the UK. That's uh, information coming from... MI5 and anti-terrorism police are monitoring more than 3,000 what they call homegrown Islamic terrorists. Many of them, they say, very young teenagers who are radicalised in a very, very short space of time. And the picture there, lovely picture, we should just mention that, 27-foot-high statue outside Twickenham. Many fans will be seeing tonight. Lucky people with tickets. On the front page of The Independent, uh, their lead story. Um, front page of The Daily Mail, they're talking about... Um, properties, people getting older and still owning large houses that perhaps they don't need, older homeowners who they're saying sit quite happily in a very big house should be given more encour encouragement to sell up and downsize according to government ministers. Can you bear with me for a moment? So, just, think, you're looking for something in particular. I'm, and I, I just I'm, got I'm one curious story. to know what it is. Oh, okay. Am I going to find it now? Is it about the Nobel Prize? It's probably not going to be worth it when we get to it, but it tickled me. Can you give us a clue? Well, the story basically, here we are. Thank you for staying with me on that one. Uh, older viewers will remember a television series called Heart to Heart. Oh. Do you remember it? Car. Uh, and all sorts. So Heart to Heart, as people remember, it was a kind of I iconic series that. of the oh, 70s I and 80s. Love... Although looking back now, it possibly was slightly camp at times. Well, yes. It was, it definitely was. I love the glamour of it. Speaking of glamour, here's Ben. With the business papers. Oh, morning. that's the nicest introduction you've ever given me. Thank you. Oh. Good morning to you. <laughs> um, all of the business pages dominated by the biggest and they say that having to pay workers more will make that turnaround much harder. And we've got the boss of Little on later, haven't we? An interview. We have. Steph's yeah. been speaking to him about that yeah. introduction of the living wage. Ben, thanks very much indeed. Uh, there is a special day of events at Biggin Hill Airport this morning to mark the 75th anniversary of the Battle of Britain. Carol is there for us this morning. Now, all this week on Breakfast, we've been looking at the role of artificial life in the modern world. Today, we're seeing how easy or perhaps difficult it is
to create robots. Yes, we're getting involved ourselves today, but robots and I have had a somewhat checkered history. You might remember things didn't go quite according to plan the last time I was given control of one. So that one didn't go quite according to plan. It was OK. So you were the ideal candidate to, for this next project. Well, we, we thought, give me the chance to try and build one, given I nearly busted one previously. So we had one day to build one robot. How did it go? They seem like they know an awful lot more about it than you They do. did. But we, we, it was a small achievement and it, it moved and it uh, did things. And does it have a name? <laughs> Didn't name it, actually. Not get yet. Personalized. Yeah. <laughs> Think about it. If you've got an idea for a name for the robot, please. Yes. A little later on, we're speaking to some young people who've also built their own robots. That'll be coming up uh, in an hour here on Breakfast. Before all that, it's time to get the news, travel and weather where you are this morning. Hello, this is Breakfast with Sally Nugent and Charlie State. Let's see the time now. Exactly 6.30 on Friday the 18th of September. We'll have the latest news and sport coming up in just a moment. When migrants arrive in Croatia, many of them being brought to registration centres, our correspondent Christian Fraser has been at one of them in the city of Zagreb. Christian Fraser reporting from Zagreb there. Now, on the first anniversary of the independence referendum, David Cameron has promised to devolve more power to Scotland. Football's world governing body, FIFA, has suspended its secretary-general. Labour's shadow chancellor has apologised for saying members of the IRA should be honoured for what he described as their armed struggle in Northern Ireland. The German retailer Lidl is to begin paying its staff the so-called living wage, the first major supermarket to do so. That brings you right up to date. It is 6.34 and the dawn of a very exciting day for rugby fans, the first day of the Rugby World Cup. Yes, it'll be played at 13 stadiums across England and Wales. Mike Bushell is at Twickenham for us this morning. Very good morning to you, Mike. It's starting to get very real for us today, isn't it? Exciting stuff. Thanks very much indeed. Uh, let's see, the time now is 6.40. It's uh, a big moment once again for London's Biggin Hill Airport. It's taking centre stage for a special day of events to mark the 75th anniversary of the Battle of Britain. Well, of course, you might remember it played a significant part back then. Ah, Carol Kirkwood is there for us this morning. And I think, is there anyone more suitable for being a force's sweetheart this morning than Carol Kirkwood? Yes, the early, early suggestions are this morning that the skies are going to be relatively clear, not only for the Rugby World Cup we were seeing a moment ago, a lot of people praying for the weather to be good there, but also for a series of events that are happening at Biggin Hill. Uh, during the course of today, a lot of fly pass and a lot of people gathering there to have a look at events as they unfold. And of course, tonight, for people who are perhaps watching the Rugby World Cup, watching the first match tonight in the fan zone near Twickenham, they will want the weather to be good too. They want clear skies and no rain. Carol will tell us whether or not they're going to get their wish later yes, on. Yes, we'll be with her in uh, a few minutes' time, 6.41. We're going to look at the business news now. Uh, two big stories in, uh, in the world of shopping. Ben, Lidl has been an enormous story, hasn't it? Just the success of the company as compared to their, their rivals and also the ongoing issue of the living wage or the minimum wage. Yeah, and Lidl managing to come out with it. No, that's introduced next year. And also what's interesting about this interview we've got today is that they're going to talk about opening a Lidl store in every town across the country. Good news or bad news, depending on your perspective but really does mark a, an important milestone and a big expansion for the firm, of course, that at the moment is known for being one of the discounters that's taking on the big established players like so Sainsbury's and Tesco. So it really could, I'm sure, on Monday. Yes. There. We love it. Yeah. It's yeah. great. Thumbs Glamour up. all round this morning. Thank you very much <laughs> indeed, Ben. Speaking of which... Very nice, very <laughs> nice. Let's go straight to Carol. It's going to be a very special day where you are today. Big and Hill, Carol. Beautiful there. Thanks very much, Carol. SC time now, 6.50. The grand final of the World Triathlon Championships is taking place in Chicago. And Louise is there competing against the best in the world. She's so brave. With more than 500 British athletes aged from 15 to 79, Great Britain has one of the strongest teams. And Louise has been doing some last-minute training with them before the big race tomorrow. Do you have help? Yeah, now we did um, ask for us and giving us ideas. Um, I really like this state of the art, mm -hmm. Charlie State, obviously. Terry the Turntable. And that one, but it's a nice name. Um, now, let's have a look at actually what Charlie did when he was making his robot. Here he is. 
Hello, this is Breakfast with Charlie State and Sally Nugent. Croatia has closed all but one of its border crossings with Serbia, saying it can't take any more migrants. And Carol is in Bromley with the weather. Morning, Carol. Good morning. First, our main story. Croatia has closed seven of its eight border crossings with Serbia overnight, only a day after the Croatian Prime Minister promised free passage to migrants trying to reach northern Europe. Yes, the country estimates that 11,000 migrants have entered its territory since Tuesday when Hungary closed its border with Serbia. Elsewhere, authorities in Slovenia stopped a train carrying more than 100 migrants at the border town of Dobova before allowing it passage to a refugee centre. Frankie McCamley reports. Thank you very much indeed. That's Christian Fraser in Zagreb live for us this morning. It's exactly a year since the referendum on Scottish independence, but the debate over increasing powers is continuing. David Cameron says further devolution is on the way, but opponents argue that his measures don't live up to promises made before the vote. Thank you. Football's world governing body FIFA has suspended its secretary general. An NHS report has revealed huge variations in health care across England, including services for stroke, cancer and diabetes. Labour's shadow chancellor has apologised for saying members of the IRA should be honoured for what he described as their armed struggle in Northern Ireland. The impact of cuts on police forces in England and Wales is far greater than the government realises, according to a group of MPs. Good morning. Um, you have a wealth of information here. What do these figures tell us? Is a delay in treatment for any major illness. I know you're specifically looking at stroke and cancer care, aren't you? It's quite a complex picture, isn't it? You can't look at the map and say my particular region or town or village is good or bad. What information should people be able to take away from this? It's a really place for several years and they don't seem to change significantly. How can you suggest that they might change in the future? Well, the key patients who are at a vulnerable time in their lives feel powerless um, against kind of the big bureaucracy of the NHS. Is there anything patients can do to take control of their diagnosis and treatment? Looking at these statistics from Public Health England, thank you. And just a reminder, if you want to look at the maps yourself, you saw them there, just visit uh, rightcare.nhs.uk forward slash atlas and you can see all the information. Now, Lidl is to become the first UK supermarket to pay staff the so-called living wage. Ben has all the details on that. Morning, Ben. Morning to you both. Yeah, it really could shake up that sector. Ben, thanks very much. Look forward to it. Let's see, time now is 16 minutes past seven. You're watching Breakfast from BBC News. A reminder of our main stories this morning. It is going to be rather a special day at Biggin Hill Airport this morning. Commemorations there for the Battle of Britain 75 years ago. Who else could we send but our very own superstar, Carol? Morning to you, Carol. Oh, I see you've got company. Who's that chap there, I wonder? Absolutely beautiful where you are this morning, Carol Biggin Hill. And uh, you managed to get rid of that uh, pesky Chris Evans. Have you got rid of him now? Let's see, the time now is 7.21. All this week on Breakfast, we've been looking at the role of artificial life in the modern world. Today, we're seeing how easy or difficult it is to create robots. Yeah, we're getting a little bit involved ourselves today, but... Robots and Charlie have had, well, something of a chequered history. You might remember a short while ago when things didn't quite go to plan for him. Watch this. It was a valuable piece of equipment, <laughs> but it, it survived. It was OK, but the, the, almost the moral of that story is don't put me and robots near one another. So but what did we do then? Obviously, we tried to get me to build one. Let's yes. see how it worked out. <laughs> Much like an expert. Almost. Let's have a chat now with some people who really are experts. Some young people also building robots themselves. In the sense that this building of robots, it's, it's competitive to a degree, but there's, there are real skills involved. And tell us a little more about the projects. So I run around because they're very easy to come across. And um, the robots play a game. So Holly, do you want to take us through your... Uh, which is your devices? Ours is this one. Metal wire. Okay. So they'll move the boxes away after it's put them where it wants it to be. Wow. OK, go on, your turn. Um, Make your pitch, come on. So <laughs> this is our robot, Carnine. It will get the box in its front bay there, and then not... It's like a revolutionary design. A little bit of work, but this fits in with what you want to say. Definitely. ...that's involved in, in these things. Experience. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You said the name of yours, didn't you? Was it? For... Yet. And yours, Charlie? Well, I called mine my bot. <laughs> <laughs> It has a certain ring to it, I suppose. Okay. <laughs> Lots of people suggesting names for Charlie's robot this morning. Do keep sending them in. They're great. 7.28 the time now. That means it's time to get the news, travel and weather where you are.
Hello, this is Breakfast with Charlie State and Sally Nugent. Time now is 7.31. Our main story this morning. Croatia has closed most of its border crossings with Serbia just a day after the Croatian Prime Minister promised free passage to migrants trying to reach Northern Europe. On the first anniversary of the independence referendum, David Cameron has promised to devolve more power to Scotland. Labour's shadow chancellor has apologised for saying members of the IRA should be honoured for what he described as their armed struggle in Northern Ireland. The impact of cuts on police forces in England and Wales is far greater than the government realises, according to a group of MPs. And that brings you right up to date. The time now is 7.33. On a very important day because the Rugby World Cup begins this evening with games played at 13 stadiums across England and Wales. Mike Bushell is in Twickenham for us this morning where all the action gets underway later. Morning, Mike. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. And, you know, I was listening to Ian Robertson's commentary from 2003 again of that last kick the other day. It made me cry. It's special, isn't it? Really oh, is special. Such a great commentator. Uh, let's see, 7.42, the time now. You're watching Breakfast from BBC News, a reminder of our main stories this morning. Time for a look at the weather this morning. Quite a few places in the UK waking up to a rather beautiful morning this morning. That's uh, us here at Salford Keys looking outside our studio. Rather beautiful sunrise this morning. I think we can possibly beat that, though, at London's Biggin Hill Airport this morning, taking centre stage, a series of events happening there today, and Carol's there for us. Morning, Carol. Lovely. Carol, thank you very much indeed. I know you've already been in the Spitfire once. Are you planning to get back in there again? For a spin. Thanks, Carol. Let's see time now. 7.48. Uh, on to the business news now. One of the UK's most famous music magazines, or is it a paper? The NME will be free from today, following the likes of other papers have gone in that direction. And Ben's got some more detail on it. And we were talking earlier, it's possibly a lot older than some people think, the enemy. Yeah, what was your best guess of when you thought the, the paper well, was founded? Well, I thought it must have started sometime in the 60s, maybe the late 60s. Yeah, because it's so interesting. It's charted musical history, hasn't it, for so long. But started in 1952. So, uh... Thanks, Ben. The grand final of the World Triathlon Championships is taking place in Chicago, and Louise is there competing against the best in the world. Yes, it's involved hours and hours of training, and is a massive achievement. With more than 500 British athletes aged from 15 to 79, Great Britain has one of the strongest teams and Louise has been doing some last-minute training with them before her race tomorrow. Can you believe she's there? Wishing her all the best, of course, and she now has her number on the, uh, on yeah. the arm there, ready to compete. It's not a tattoo, that was just a joke earlier on. Uh, much more from Louise in the next hour. Time before all that to get the news, travel and weather where you are this morning. Hello, this is Breakfast with Charlie State and Sally Nugent. Croatia has closed all but one of its border crossings with Serbia, saying it can't take any more migrants. Good morning. It's Friday the 18th of September. Also on the programme this morning... Carol has the weather for us. Croatia has closed most of its border crossings with Serbia just a day after the Croatian Prime Minister promised free passage to migrants trying to reach Northern Europe. Thank you very much indeed. That's Christian Fraser for us in Zagreb. And just to recap what he was saying, it looks like perhaps the journey that some of those migrants might have to take will potentially be through minefields, so not an easy journey. Now, it's exactly a year since the referendum on Scottish independence, but the debate over increased powers is continuing. David Cameron says further devolution is on the way, but opponents argue that his measures don't live up to promises made before the vote. Thank you. Football's world governing body, FIFA, has suspended its secretary-general. The NHS report has revealed huge variations in health care across England, including services for stroke, cancer and diabetes. Labour's shadow chancellor has apologised for saying members of the IRA should be honoured for what he described as their armed struggle in Northern Ireland. The impact of cuts on police forces in England and Wales is far greater than the government realises. That's according to a group of MPs. Yes, in a highly critical report, the Commons Public Accounts Committee also says cuts to other services are increasing police work. The Home Office says the reforms are working and frontline policing is being protected. Here's our Home Affairs correspondent, Dominic Casciani. It is 11 minutes past eight. We have a full weather forecast coming up in the next 10 minutes or so. Now, it is one of the biggest sporting events in the world. 
six weeks of rugby and all, and there are just hours to go before the opening game. England take on Fiji as the Rugby World Cup kicks off at Twickenham this evening. We're joined from there now. We wish you the best for the tournament. Thank you very much for your time this morning. In Richie is the uh, Chief Executive of the Rugby Football Union. And you can follow the Rugby World Cup on BBC Radio 5 Live, the BBC Sport app and online. Let's see, time now, 16 minutes past eight. You're watching Breakfast from BBC News. Our main story is this morning. So we've got a rather special weather forecast from Carol today in a rather special location. It's Biggin Hill Airport. Uh, Mark, an absolute delight talking to Joy a moment ago. She's so interesting. Well, thanks very much. See you later on. Now, Lidl is to become the first major supermarket to pay its staff the so-called living wage. Ben, what does that mean? Yeah, in, five in London, that will be more than the new national living wage when it's introduced next year. They say that will raise prices. Uh, Steph's been speaking to the boss in the UK. This is what he had to say. So that's the boss there of Lidl in the UK talking about that rise. Lidl, you'll get 299 just £12 difference. Wow. Ben, thank you. Victoria Derbyshire, the programme is on at 9.15 this morning, BBC Two. Joanna Gosling's there this morning. Morning, Joanna. Thank you. Coming up in a moment on the BBC News Channel is Business Life, but here on Breakfast, it's time to get the news, travel and weather where you are this morning. Hello, this is Breakfast with Charlie State and Sally Nugent. Time now is 8.31, a reminder of our main stories this morning. Croatia has closed most of its border crossings with Serbia just a day after the Croatian Prime Minister promised free passage to migrants trying to reach northern Europe. On the first anniversary of the independence referendum, David Cameron has promised to devolve more power to Scotland. Labour's shadow chancellor has apologised for saying members of the IRA should be honoured for what he described as their armed struggle in Northern Ireland. The impact of cuts on police forces in England and Wales is far greater than the government realises, according to a group of MPs. That brings you right up to date. The time now is 8.33. Carol will have all the weather for us in about 10 minutes from now, but also coming up on the programme this morning... Do you think that's a hint as to what she's been eating nope. while she's been in Chicago? All that training yeah. <laughs> and then burgers. Yeah, I think, that's what she's up to. I we think, were wondering. Yeah, I think they know that's what we eat most of the time. <laughs> she's actually been on the kale and spinach smoothies. Uh, we'll also be finding out how I got on when I tried my hand at building a robot in a day. And we've given it a name as well, haven't we? Lots of people writing in tell us, telling us what Charlie's robot should be called. So do keep those coming. We're loving your suggestions. And more on that a little later on time now, 8.34. So it is a big day for rugby. Mike is at Twickenham. It is, of course, the start of the Rugby World Cup. And they have the opening ceremony tonight, Mike. It's going to be uh, nearly, what is it, four or five weeks of action. A version yeah. of the Rugby World Cup. As uh, Mike Tyndall, who was on with him earlier on, uh, of course, a World Cup winner in 2003, suggested we'd miniaturise that one specially for yeah. Mike to be the correct size. Mike, Mike, I think Mike Tyndall is the only person who could get away with suggesting we had given him a trophy to scale. Slightly cruel. Uh, we were talking Funny a little though. earlier to uh, Ian Ritchie, the chief executive of the RFU, who was talking about uh, the scale of the events to come and the fact that they're very keen to reach out to people who had previously not been uh, rugby fans and how that's a very important part of how this event has been planned. Yes, and interestingly, Ian Ritchie, of course, had huge success for many years at Wimbledon. He steered that ship particularly well, so it's interesting to see how the next few weeks will pan out for him. I think we can go back to Mike now with the problems with the uh, microphone <laughs> sorted out. Lots more of that coming up throughout the Rugby World Cup. Maybe they've got a part in the opening ceremony tonight. Possibly. Who knows, maybe they have a future with our next guest because it's been a big and busy year for the rock band Florence and the Machine. Their third album topped the charts just like the first two and they headlined Glastonbury at the last minute. Yes, they're touring as we speak and the new single Queen of Peace is out now. And Florence Welch is with us. Back to you <laughs> because you, were, you didn't get to bed till what, three in the morning? Uh, first, let's have a look at Florence in action. Morning, Florence. Lovely to have you here. Just watching those videos and the thing that strikes you, I think, is the changes in your hair. Yeah, I was like, oh, that was funny when I didn't have a fringe for a while. <laughs> and, um, yeah, there used to be a lot of glitter, yeah. What's changed? I wonder, I mean, given that, that everyone talks about how creative you are with the, both the imagery and the music itself, as you come under more scrutiny because pe more people know about you, everything you wear, everything you, you every way you look in the videos it is sort of people ask questions about everything to do with it. It's almost, is that a pressure in a way? <laughs> so people can get a sense of it now. Let's have a look at the Queen of Peace. 
It's yeah. beautiful to knows, look at. Yeah, there's a bit more to it than that. <laughs> Still really beautifully filmed. It's a proper, it's a beautiful film, isn't it? Thank you. Thank you, yeah, it was, um, it was really... That, that particular uh, video, there's a lot of hugging. I mean, the, you, <laughs> you, you, you know, try to stop what is happening around you. Are you a, is that a, are you a natural hugger? That's what I was trying to ask. Really. I, yeah, am. You, are you I know, but I really... Natural, is that what you, you meant, know. Scott? <laughs> is that just what Charlie saw? <laughs> put yourself on the tour bus as well, because I imagine you must have, I mean, you're on tour now, as you say, you work really hard, you're doing late night dynamics you know, within, you know, the band and whatever that's, you know, there's an ebb and flow to those things. What's your role in there? You... <laughs> um, a moment ago that um, you filmed the video having done a year of studying modern dance. Yeah. How do you manage to take a year out and do that? Well, it was kind of in, you know, I toured ceremonial videos, I think, that was a really important aspect that I wanted to... And it's lovely what you're saying about just enjoying the moment of, of those sort of pinch yourself moments. We're getting paid to do the thing we love. And, and people remember your performance at Glastonbury, of course. Was that one of those times when you have to, you know, you're walking on stage and, and you're thinking, you know, here we are. This is the of you to come in for us this morning. What, after, what, three hours sleep yeah. or something? <laughs> That's very rock and roll, that. <laughs> is out right now. Uh, we're going to take a moment to have a uh, look at the weather. Carol's having rather a wonderful morning this morning. Imagine, Carol, you might be doing a spot of dancing this weekend. Got Kirky, we're all with you. Thank you. Time is 9.01. The grand final of the World Triathlon Championships is taking place in Chicago. And Louise is there, amazingly competing against the best in the world. It's involved hours and hours of training. It's a huge achievement. Yes, with more than 500 British athletes aged from 15 to 79, Great Britain has one of the strongest teams. And Louise has been doing some last-minute training with them before her big race tomorrow. For those involved, amazing the age range and uh, <sighs> terrific achievements. I, I, I can't even believe she's got there. She's worked so hard to get there. And in just two years since her first triathlon, it's really quite an achievement. Uh, we'll make sure we uh, keep in touch and see how she gets on tomorrow. Um, in a moment, find out what happened when Charlie tried to build a robot in a day. You can only imagine the results. First, though, a quick last look at what's happening where you are. Now, all of this week on Breakfast, we've been looking at the role of artificial life in the modern world. Today, we're seeing how easy, or perhaps, is it difficult to make a robot? You should know. It's not easy. I've had a little help uh, from my friends at Southampton University, but the idea was that inside a day, could we build, could I build a robot? Let's see what happened. We have your robots with us. I yeah. wonder if we can just get a little look at them. And Rob, you can tell us. Um, and. Uh, that was the main thing. Have a little look at Charlie's, because Charlie <laughs> spent a whole day, was it at the University of Southampton? Yeah, fair, and I, I have to be honest, I had a lot of help. <laughs> I couldn't have done it on my own. Holly, tell us about yours. It's something that can, can do, it, it, it has to... Which it hoops over the boxes to move them around, and then it has another metal arm which swipes them out. To the greatest respect to your creation. Together there was no um, sort of actual craft in the robot, and it just fell apart constantly. So this year we wanted to put like, a catch on anything and nothing that would break them. It's all hidden away when you actually put the lid back on. Um, and therefore, nothing can break, nothing can fall apart other than the wheel, which has fallen off recently. And so, Rob, presumably, <laughs> part of it is, is the engineering. I mean, it's all engineering, isn't it? You have t a talent for this sort of thing. Are they likely to find jobs, to find work? Is it a great... Yeah, it's a very good industry to get into. And, and Holly, we hear a lot about the, the lack of, of women, of girls going into science in this kind of field. What, what's your experience so far? Because what's the plan, sort of, career-wise? Um, well, I, I'm sorry, and that's why I've loved student robotics so much, because I've mostly been on the design side, and um, just, here's the issue, how do we fix it? When... Thank you very much for bringing them in for us. Thank you, Robert. Tomorrow morning, see you from six. Bye for now. Bye-bye.